Hey everybody, so today I'm going to be going over how I edit all my renders in Photoshop. I do this to every render that I export from Blender and I feel like it adds a lot to the image to improve the quality and help polish it up post Blender. I'm going to be walking you through all the layers and how I go about editing each one and hopefully you find this helpful. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to drag in the final image from Blender and then I like to add in the ambient occlusion layer. So what you do is you go to the render layers properties and you make sure to tick on the ambient occlusion layer. And then you just go ahead and you save that out when you're saving your final image. And so once you drag that in, I like to change the blend mode to overlay and then add around 10 to 20% fill. What this does is it helps us add in some detail back in that kind of gets lost with the denoising process in Blender. Uh, so if we hide this on and off, you can kind of see, especially back here, how much uh, detail gets added back in to the scene. And also it kind of helps with the uh, volumetric fog that I had as well. It just adds in a little bit more to uh, those areas that kind of got lost. And so what I like to do after that is I like to add in a blur layer. And so what I do is I copy that final initial image and I go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I usually add in around 14 or 15 pixels worth of blur. And what that ends up looking like is that looks like this. And so what I do with that is you go over to lighten or screen, whichever one that you prefer, or you can do both. And then you bring down this fill amount. And what this does is this kind of adds in a nice little like almost fog glow effect from the compositing in Blender. And this helps kind of add some more glow to your scene. It really helps a lot when you have a lot more uh, light sources than what this scene has. But I feel like it still adds a lot to this one. So if we toggle that on and off, you can kind of see the difference, especially around uh, the fire right here. It's kind of adding a more glowing effect to everything. And then the next thing that I do is I go down and I create new layers and I do two of them. Uh, these curve layers and for one of them what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down blacks and then the other one what I'll do is I'll bring up the whites and so what you can do with this curve layer is it makes this mask for you so if you go over to your brush tool and you make sure that this is on uh, black and white on the color and you paint around with black that will get rid of the areas that you don't want to affect so if this is for the shadows we're going to go ahead and we're going to get rid of all this area in the middle you can kind of paint out where you want uh, this layer to be affecting. And so I like to do this once for the darks and once for the lights. And what this does is this lets you kind of fine tune the contrast uh, where you want it at on your image. And so when you add these in, we're going to delete that. When you add in this darks, you can see it kind of adds in a little bit more dark to the background. But this lights one is what really, really helps. It really helps bring out this middle area. And then once this is all done initially, what I do is I group all of it. And so if you group everything in Photoshop and then you can copy the group, you can right click on it and you can click merge group. And what this is going to do is this is going to merge all those layers into one. So essentially you have a new image and then you can right click and you want to convert these all to smart objects. That's what I like to do because it is a non-destructive editing technique. So when you convert uh, your image to a smart object, when you add in other filters, to your image, you can toggle them on and off like what you see here, as opposed to it being destructive. So I like to do that so you can kind of toggle on and off the differences as you're editing so you can see what you're doing and if you actually like the changes versus what was there before. So I have these two separated, um, but you can do them all on the same layer. Uh, this is all with the camera raw filter. If you go up to filter and then select camera raw. And so for this first one, what I'm doing is this is a lighting correct and it's also adding in some sort of effects to this to kind of make everything pop. So if we go ahead and we open this up, we can see what I did here. Really messed with the exposure, contrast, the highlights and the shadows. This is just kind of fine tuning everything on how I wanted it. I brought up the shadows here because I thought that it needed that. I brought up the exposure. I like contrast, so I brought that up. And this is just kind of fine tuning the blacks and whites, the highlights and the shadows. This is just basic photo editing. Now, the kind of more artistic choices that I like to do on all my renders is add in texture and clarity. So if we get rid of these, what you can see is that this really adds in some detail back into the scene. You have to be careful not to crank this too high because if you go too high with it, it starts to look kind of unrealistic and too textury. But I usually like to add in somewhere around 30, if I'm being honest, because I feel like a lot of the texture and definition on renders gets lost with the denoising uh, just because that kind of is blurring out everything almost to kind of make everything look clear. So I like to add in some texture and I like to add in some clarity. 
And then what also what I do is you go into the details here and you bring up the sharpening. And the sharpening does this really helps clean up everything. You just have to make sure you don't go too high with this as well. It's kind of the same. So I like to play with all three of those and to kind of find a nice balance between that. The other thing that I like to do is I like to go to this effect. I'm a really big fan of adding in like grain into the images. I know that like the whole point of denoising is to get rid of that grain, but I think it's good to get rid of it and then add it in post to your own personal taste. It's an artistic choice. That's just what I like to do. I like to go down to effects and I like to add in a little bit of grain, just a very small amount, usually around like 10 or so. And so once that's done and I'm happy with the lighting correction, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll group, merge it, and then create a new one and make it a smart object as well. And I'll make another instance of camera raw. Now this one is going to be for color correction. What you do is you go down to this color mixer section of the camera raw filter, and this will be set to HSL. And you change this over to color. And what this does is this brings up all of these tabs for all of the main colors in your scene and what it lets you do is for this one the best examples with the greens is it lets you affect the hue and the saturation and the luminance of all the layers so if we zero this back out you can kind of see that the greens aren't exactly as green as i would like them to be so you can drag this over if you want these to look more kind of fall colors you can do that but i drag this over to about here and then i actually brought down the saturation a bit because i felt that it was too bright and then if you go over to the yellows, you can do the same with the yellows. And this one's really dramatic because it's going to be mixing between orange and green. But you can kind of, this is where you get in your really two taste uh, color correction. So I'll usually go through, a lot of my scenes are nature scenes, so I'm really just messing with the yellows and the greens and the blues. But this will just be me kind of fine tuning all of these colors and the saturation amounts that I like. You can also do it with the blues here if you look up the sky up here. Um, you can really see that difference here. This will make it more purple, that'll make it more that, so this you can kind of like fine tune it to how you want it to look. And then what I also like to do is to go down to this calibration section, and this will let you change your red, green, and blue primaries, and this is kind of the overall RGB amount that's in your scene. And so for these ones, I like to kind of change it's the same hue slider that's up in the color mixer you know it makes it more yellow or more green but i like to mess with these as well because this kind of helps add in to all of it at once and not just those specific layers this is actually affecting the entire rgb space of your image as opposed to just the specific green layer they're a little different but i like to mess with these as well and kind of fine tune these to where i want it then once what I'll do after the color correction, if I want to add in any more compositional elements into this, such as like light streaks or fog, which I did for this one, I'll add it in now. So this one's just this fog PNG that I have, just this fog layer. I'll change it over to like lighten or screen so it blends pretty well in and then just bring it down. And this is just adding in some more fog into that foreground. That seemed to help give it some more definition. And then... Sometimes I'll add in some other light streaks images or bokehs or things like that, but for this one, I just wanted a little bit more fog in this foreground. And so what I'll do once I'm done with that is I'll group everything again, merge that, and then create another final image in a sense. And this one is just a final edit layer. And for this one, I just added in another camera raw filter, and this one will just be going through everything one more time and just kind of fine tuning everything to it's my ability. I'm tweaking the general photo editing stuff just to tweak again. And then I added in some more texture and clarity again. Uh, this is just adding in one more layer of just getting everything kind of meshed in how I want it to look. So then once that layers is done, this is kind of the final section. And this is all just artistic kind of additional color correction things that I like to add or texture photos. I'm a really big fan of adding in kind of dust or grain on top of your images. I feel like it helps add some interesting elements to those. So for this one, I just added in a noise image set to overlay at 22%. And then I also added in this dust to lighten at about 20%. If we crank this back up, you can see this is just adding in some dust into the image. I think it just helps add in some more texture. To the actual image itself and then what i did after that was i added in this hue saturation layer and i turned down the saturation a little bit because i felt like it was too saturated from all my editing so i'm just bringing down the saturation amount um all of these layers are added with this little circle right here you click on this and this will add in all these layers 
that you want. So this is this huge saturation layer. Then after that, I'm a really big fan of LUTs, um, their color lookups. What they do is they have like a predefined kind of editing style uh, that somebody else has made. Um, they come with Photoshop and I like to add in them to almost all my renders. I'm a really big fan of these Fuji ones that come with Photoshop. So this first one, if we turn it up all the way, what well, you can see, it's kind of making it look very vintage, kind of worn out. Um, I like adding in this one a lot, just at a low amount. And then this one, this one adds in a lot of contrast, but I like to add this one in just a little bit. And I feel like this kind of helps mesh in all of my texture photos and adjustments and it helps kind of flatten everything out. So it's all kind of in a similar color space now. It all kind of adds it all in together. And then for this one, I just also added in a brightness and a contrast just to fine tune the brightness and the contrast because it was a little bit too bright. I just brought that down a little bit and then I brought up the contrast just a little bit more because this look kind of took a little bit of it away from me. So that's kind of my whole post processing for Photoshop. Um, we can do it before and after. So this is after all of that editing and this is before. Uh, I feel like this really has helped make this image pop a lot and it helps add in a lot of this detail back in here that was kind of lost because of how dark it was coming out of Blender. And I really feel like that texture and that clarity and that camera raw filter really adds a lot. Um, a lot of this is just to your own artistic preference. This is just what I like to do. So take your own renders, do what you want with them. Uh, I think my biggest recommendation overall is just to use the camera raw filter to help adjust the lighting and the color correction for your renders. So yeah, hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.